Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the Maki -E Vlog. You guys probably all know Brandon Flash. Uh, we we actually met. Uh, what was it like, December 2021? Yeah, the EV charge or not EV charging summit, the EV Media Summit by Out of Spec. Yeah, so the one-time occurrence. Yeah, very cool. Uh, but be beyond yes. your YouTube channel, you work yep. for Alphatronic, and we're yep. standing in front of some cool stuff here. Yeah, this is the new HYC 1000 with our truck dispenser and car dispenser. And then on the screen, we're also showing our power cabinet that powers these. Very cool. Now, do, so there is a power cabinet. Yes. That's off to the side. Yep. We won't necessarily see as, as yep. consumers, but this is what we would see. Now, this one is more for the, the, the trucks. We yep. have the, the megawatt. Yeah, so we have the MCS plug here, 1500 amps. This is a liquid cooled cable. This is the big boy plug. I, lo I love the zoom in effect there. Um, but then you also have a regular CCS1, yep. so the versatility for the fleet customer. Yes, yeah, I mean, MCS is not quite in the market yet. It's yeah. progressing at varying rates depending on the OEM. Um, but right now, a lot of trucks are still using CCS1 or CCS2 in Europe, of course. Um, but there are also some applications with range extending trailers or other auxiliary things that may need to be charged at the same time, even on an MCS vehicle. So this gives a lot of flexibility for that. Or if you have a mixed heavy duty, medium duty and light duty fleet that you wanted to be able to have charging for those as well. I love seeing this, but we'll, we'll at least peek over here at the yep. more consumer one, just because this is something that we may actually see out in the field at some point. Um, you want to tell us about the features of this? Cause like, first of all, there's nothing out there that's just powerful as this no, right now. No, so this can do 600 amps simultaneously on both connectors. And what that really means is that you can have two lightnings charging at full power simultaneously. You can have two Lucids charging at full power simultaneously. You can have two Silverados charging at full power simultaneously on the same dispenser. Without That's amazing yeah, power. <laughs> it's wild. You could have effectively up to one megawatt coming out of this dispenser because your only limit really realistically is the power cabinet. Right. And that's one megawatt. So you could have 500 kilowatts coming out of both connectors at the same time, up to 600 amps. And it's Applatronic. Yes. So it's a great design. Yep. Built-in cable management, lighting. Yep. Yeah, look at that. And of course, flexibility with, uh, Max or J3400, CCS1, if yep. we were in Europe, CCS2. Of course. <laughs> um, but yesterday, and we saw the presentation yesterday, and it's stuff like the screen used to be on the side. Yep. You've heard a lot of feedback. Yeah, we, we listened to what our customers told us, um, also what EV drivers told us, that they wanted the screen on the front, they wanted the connectors, the screen all on the same side, both from a usability, site design, and serviceability perspective. So another advantage of this is that there's only one door you need for servicing versus our 200 and 400 products that we'll get to in a moment. They actually have three doors that open, so it can make site design a little bit challenging. So we took that feedback and really took it to heart in improving this product. And I see like you have the flexibility. So I'm assuming like there's the, the, your card reader would go. Yeah, I think right now we have like 15 plus different payment terminals for different yeah. countries and regions. So this is basically a plate. It gets replaced with um, an adapter plate, if you will. And then you can put whatever payment terminal is relevant for your area or business. And we mentioned Europe a couple of times. And, yep. and for people that don't know, Alpatronic is an Italian company. Yes. Uh, but it's not just an Italian company. No. It's, it's like the biggest charger in Europe. Yeah. I mean, we have over 80,000 DC ports deployed, which is actually more than Tesla supercharger ports. And we don't have any ports in China. Wow. Yeah. I, so, didn't, I didn't think about that part. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole big gap right there. Yeah. So what are you, what are you doing? You got to go over there next. <laughs> America next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're really excited to see these. Uh, yeah. We were just at Green Lane yep. uh, last week, and they had the Alpatronics, I believe the HYC 400. Correct. Yeah, they have 12 of those. Yeah. Uh, you, want, you want to talk about Green Lane? And sure. Should we go over there? Today? Yeah, we can talk about the 400 over here. I mean, we, we love this, but we know this is what a lot of people are going to see. Yeah, you're going to be seeing these basically everywhere blanketing the United States over the next probably 18 to 24 months. You can already get around the entire Texas Triangle, so the Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, Houston Triangle on entirely hyperchargers from a couple different charging networks, actually. So you'll see them from IANA, Walmart, Electrify America, BP Pulse, among others. 
That's really cool. And it, and it seems like it's a, been a pretty quick shift. Yeah. Because there's been a lot of different, you know, we, we walk around here and there's a lot of charging companies. Yes, there have been. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, we're sitting here in your, your booth having some nice espresso from yes. Italy. <laughs> and we see these other charging companies coming by and saying hello and playing with your cable management and all that. Yeah, stuff. I mean, we were the first to have this swing arm design and then basically everyone else copied it. So this is a all in one unit though Correct. so like that one had the, the distribution block is, yep. is in the back but this is a standalone unit yeah so what you see here is you have ac coming in and then you have the dc coming out of the charge handles to the vehicles but everything is in this block and this is actually about the same size as some companies have for dispensers yeah. let alone having any power electronics in it and what's cool about alpatronics is that we actually develop the power electronics ourselves so all the way down to the silicon carbide chip level and then make the entire system from there so rather than repurposing power electronics from other applications whether it be data centers solar um welding we're building it from the ground up for ev charging which gives us a lot of advantage um, in really optimizing it for the duty cycle of ev charging versus those other duty cycles yeah i can imagine that's a big advantage of like versus trying yeah. to make somebody else's component work in exactly your yeah i mean some are doing it with either in-house components that they're repurposing or a lot of the ev charging manufacturers are actually buying off-the-shelf power modules there's a few major ma power module manufacturers that probably 80% of chargers on the market are using. And of course, as the EV driver, we always see, you know, yeah. like you, you do the videos as well. We want to see these big power units, yeah. but we're gonna, we're gonna like take a look because it's not all about the big power all the time. So no. I wanna like slowly, we're gonna slowly walk around here. It's really important to match the power level to the use case. Right. So yes, 400 kilowatts is awesome. And that's what you want at your rest stop type stops, your gas stations, whatever, where you have a quick turn, you want to charge as much as you can, as quickly as you can and get back on the road. Um, but the HYC 200 or the HYC 50, they're actually great for like overnight charging for fleets, um, longer dwell times to think like supermarket type applications, uh, malls even. And I think we may see some sites in the future that have a mix of the different products to yeah. give people options, similar to how you might see some level twos with some DC charging. I think we're gonna see varying power levels of DC depending on the site. Yeah, oh, I mean, it's like a, a great example is one of our last road trips. Like we, yeah. were, we were actually uh, charging at a supercharger but we went to go eat and I'm like, we got to hurry up and finish <laughs> the car's done. Yeah. Uh, I could pick, you know, a 200 or a 50 and have that nice long yeah. tail. Well, and I think with the flexibility of the HYC 1000 system, you can kind of have the best of both worlds because you have that shared power across all the ports. Right. You're not having to worry about tying up that power and you're gonna have more ports on the same site typically that it doesn't matter quite as much to match the power level to your dwell time. It could be pretty challenging, especially as EVs are shifting towards the mass market to educate buyer or EV drivers of how to pick that power level and how do you communicate that? Because I mean, as we see with bolts charging at 350 kilowatt chargers, a lot of people just see big number. I want that even if their vehicle can't take advantage of yeah. it. Yeah. And, and us as sort yeah. of earlier EV us owners, <laughs> yeah, we, we want to criticize them, but really it shouldn't be on them to-, to They don't know. Yeah, they, they don't, don't know any better. To. They're used to gas, which they see a big number. They want that premium gas, even though that's a different discussion. You don't need <laughs> premium gas in most cars, but yeah. I, I don't know if it's an American thing or just the human psyche. They see big numbers, they want that. Yeah, when they <laughs> charge them more and, and they'll still do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, and I, so I think that's the, the thing that I really like is like you guys are, helping CPOs yeah. have that ability to deploy yes. stuff yeah. that just makes it like easy to dynamically adjust. Yeah, and I mean, you can get the 400 with less power modules. So yeah. you could start out with 200 kilowatts and then add two more power stacks later on, if that makes sense. We're seeing some fleet customers do that as well, that today's vehicle that they're charging, they have a longer dwell time or they may not be running 24 seven. So they have that longer dwell time, but they want the flexibility to be able to add more power modules that way, as they have different vehicles in the future that may charge faster, they can then upgrade it and have that peak capability. Now, the, the other thing is, you know, yeah. we hear great things about Alpatronic, yeah. um, but as EV drivers know, yeah. we know that maintenance is an issue. Yes. But you guys think about that when you are designing and making these, making yes. them easy to maintain as well. Yeah, it's a fundamental principle of the entire design is that it's very modular. So we have our power stack uh, kind of core concept. It's basically a giant cassette that's vertical, one person can swap it about an hour or so, 
uh, maybe a little bit faster depending on how many times they've done it. Right. Uh, and then a few basic control boards that we can remotely diagnose on just about any charger. And then that way we're sending the technician to change a part rather than having to do wiring or use multimeters and diagnose in the field. We're yeah. doing all of that ahead of time remotely. And learning from your experience in yes. Europe. So yeah. it's like you guys know you can sort of diagnose things. Just makes it easier for the technician. Absolutely. And for me as the EV driver, again, it's like I shouldn't have to worry about that. All I want is a quickly maintained. And yeah, you want that the charger when it breaks, which it will at it some will. point. It's just inevitable, no matter how good the product is, yeah. that it's repaired quickly and easily. Well, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, I still have it charged on the Alphatronics. Well, you need to get to it. You need to go to Greenlane. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what I'll have to do. Um, but yeah, we're really excited. You guys are working with yeah. Iona, Walmart. So hopefully we'll see some of these. Yeah, uh, we're very excited soon. as well. It's been about 18 months of a lot of hard work and we're starting to really see it pop up into the wild. It's been quiet, but now it's getting loud. And we'll have to like message. So you yeah. can help me find one down of here course. in Southern California, besides Green Lane, but we could yeah. make it back Green Lane's the only one in Southern California right uh, now. Unfortunately, the West can be a little bit challenging to develop sites or it takes a lot longer. Yeah. That's why there's a lot in Texas and the East Coast because it can be a lot faster to develop sites out there. Uh, We'll just make a road trip over there. That works too. All right. <laughs> well, thank you for your time today. Of course. Uh, it's good to see you again. I mean, we see yeah, you yeah. All the multiple time. times, but uh, I, it, it's sort of weird, like the first time being on the Mach E vlog, uh, which <laughs> by the way, now uh, Brandon is now a Lightning owner. Yes. So he's one of us in the Ford EV <laughs> club. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, he got, he got a great deal. Check out his channel for some reviews and updates on that, yeah. as well as like the other stuff that he's put out there. Um, by the way, uh, Un unrelated yeah. to Alphatronic, uh, he did a great video on the adapters. And oh, yes. The adapters you shouldn't buy. This is something that we keep emphasizing. He and why. And why. So if you haven't watched that, watch his video uh, because it's something that we yeah. are all very passionate about. Yeah, like, there's so many adapters out there. It's easier to say which adapters you should look at or buy rather than say which ones not to because there's a new one that you shouldn't buy every day. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again. Of course. And yeah. uh, we'll see you. Thanks the for having me event. on. See you guys.